Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an exciting new product. Soundflow is now available for Logic Pro. This is kind of a big deal for Logic users. It's fundamentally a new way of interacting with Logic, and I don't think that's overstating it. Up until now, we basically had the mouse and the keyboard. Now, Soundflow allows us to create scriptable macros so that we can get multiple actions with a single touch or even reorganizing all the basic single tasks in meaningful ways. It allows us to create these and access them on a stream deck, which is a really inexpensive way to have some nice tactile control. You can use it on an iPad, and that's what I'm going to be using it on for this video. And you can even use it on the Mac itself. And I'm going to do that later in the video and show you how that works. And you can even trigger these actions from your QWERTY keyboard or MIDI keyboard. So why should you care about this? Well, using the mouse and using the key commands requires two things. It requires you to know where to mouse, and it requires you to know what the key commands are and what the functions are called to find the key commands. And discoverability is a big pain point for all DAWs. There's so many tasks and functions that no user can know all of them. So with Soundflow, we get as a starting template, a grid of five by three grid with 15 decks. And each of those contains sub decks and folders. And it groups together in meaningful ways, all the basic tasks and actions that you're gonna go through as an average logic user. So you can just tap and have everything right in front of you rather than hunting through menus or trying to memorize key commands and mouse around through sub menus and flip menus and things like that. Now, where it gets really fun is creating your own macros and it's not difficult to do. I'm gonna show you later in the video. I'm gonna start off by going through the five by three deck that ships with Logic and just that is cool enough on its own. Then I'm gonna show you how to create a couple of simple macros and I think if you're like me, your eyes are going to open up and say like, oh my God, I think I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. And for example, if you're maybe a film composer or anyone doing any repetitive tasks, you can program macros. Maybe you want to, at a push of a button, call up a whole bunch of tracks with all your strings loaded, all in different MIDI channels with EQ plugins, all colored a certain way and so on. That's just one idea that pops to mind. If you're an editor, maybe doing some post-production editing, you can get repetitive tasks done in quick, single touch workflows and a lot more. So let's take a look. The default Logic Pro Soundflow deck is a five by three grid. So we have 15 cells, but each cell contains various sub decks and folders. So we have deep access to all of Logic's nested key commands and buried menu functions, all a tap or two away. It's a different way of discovering and working with Logic. For example, here I have this bass track selected. I'm gonna tap on colors and go to track color. Maybe I wanna recolor it. Boom, it's done from there. Now I'm gonna go back and then maybe I'm gonna to go to the edit menu and Let's go to move, and I'm gonna select this bass track again, and let's say I can rotate left or right or nudge the regions. For example, all right here, I can select, let's say, all audio tracks in the session, select all instrument tracks. And I'm just quickly going through some of these nested functions. Let's go to transform, you get access to two pages of presets. So again, with this bass selected, let's just make sure we're viewing velocity, for example, and I'll select this and I can humanize and boom, there's a variation right away. We'll go back and let's say I decide in Mixer, I want to enable automation quick access or show automation. I can do that, tap it again and I'm back out. Maybe plugins, I decide I want to add an auto filter. Boom, it's add that to the selected track and I have access to all the different categories of plugins here with these nested sub decks. And let's say I want to add a send on there. I'm going to set up a send to go to bus nine. And then what I can do is go to plugins and hold down option while I'm tapping on one of these plugins. Like for example, delay, I'm going to hold down option and tap on delay designer. And then it adds it to the signal flow channel strip. You can see it's added it in the inspector to the destination of that send. So very powerful. We get access to all the preferences over here and settings. We can access the tools. We have all kinds of track functions. Maybe I want to quickly create a new software instrument track. Boom, that's done. All kinds of ways to customize the views. Let's say left panel, I want to hide the inspector. I want to show it. Maybe in the right panel, I want to look at the loop browser. All kinds of ways to 
work quickly within here. But of course, the fun comes when you design your own actions and macros. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I've got the default 5x3 deck showing, but I'm going to go up to the top to default packages, and I'm going to hit the plus button. I want to create a new macro, and I'm going to name it my alchemy strip, and it's going to be a customized alchemy that's going to be called up. So let's do that, and I'm going to pin this by clicking the pin button, and that way I can simply drag and drop all the actions that I want on that. So this is basically a macro designer here, and we can either go add action and navigate through menus or just drag and drop. So first thing I'm going to do is scroll down here. I'm just going to hide what I don't need. I don't need to see anything Pro Tools related. I'm just looking at the Logic Pro packages. I'm going to go to the Track Functions menu here. And I can simply drag in, create a software instrument track, and that would be done. But I want to use this, which gives me more customization ability. So I'm going to drag this in here, and we have the first thing. So for the track type, I'm going to select a MIDI software instrument. And here's where I'm going to customize it. I don't want it to load the default patch or open the library in case you have that set up. But the output path, instead of defaulting to stereo output, I like all my new tracks to output to a mix bus. And I use bus 64. So I'm going to type in bus and then bus 64. Now, it's important you use the right syntax with capitalization and spaces and so on. But the new track that's created will now be assigned to that output. So the next thing I want to do is color the track. So I'm going to go to colors here. And we have clip color, but I'm looking down here for track color over here. And we have all the different rows that are in the palette. And we can choose any of these. I'm going to choose maybe this one. I'm just going to drag it in and that's done. So now I want to select my instrument. So I'm going to go to the instrument loader and I'm going to choose alchemy. And you can easily set up a preset to bring in third party instruments as well. I'm not going to get into that right now, but it's not difficult to do at all. I had it calling up Omnisphere before without any problem. So maybe I want a MIDI effects plugin as well on this channel strip. So I'm going to go to the MIDI effects loader and I'll drag in, let's say the arpeggiator. Now, I want to put some plugins as well. So I'm going to go to the plugin loader, and maybe I want this channel strip to have some compression on it. So I'm going to just drag in a compressor over here, and maybe I want some EQ as well. We'll go to the Vintage Console EQ. And I also have in my template, I have a comfort reverb set up on bus eight, just for when I'm tracking. It's general all-purpose reverb I use as a starting point. I often end up using it. But maybe I want to have a send set up on this track so that it's going to route to that reverb in case I need it. So I'm going to go to the sends loader, and I'm going to drag in bus eight and put that there. So now what I can do is run this macro just to test it. But before that, I want to add one last command. I want to put a command in to close all the windows that are going to be open from the arpeggiator, compressor, alchemy, and so on. So maybe this time I'll type in here to search for the function I'm looking for. Close all. Let's go to install packages. There we go. Close all floating windows. So I want to put that there. So let's just test this macro. I'm going to go run macro. And let's see how it works. It's doing everything I asked for so far. And boom. So there's our channel strip with the arpeggiator, alchemy, the two plugins, the send set up to bus eight, which I've named reverb in my own IO settings. And the mix bus is routed here to bus 64, which again, I've named in my own settings. So back to SoundFlow now. What I want to do is unpin this macro, and I want to create a new deck to put this in. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here, and I'm going to give this a name. And there it is. And what I'm going to do is just clear that, and we'll see everything there in the default packages. EK custom deck. There it is. And I can take my channel strip and drag it in there. So I want to have a couple of other functions. One thing I find myself often wanting to do is I'm working on a mix and I have a vocal track and it's sounding nice. And I realize, you know, I want to set up a delay on there. I want to put set up a send to go to a bus with a delay plugin. Well, let's automate that really easily. I'm going to go to my sends loader. And again, let me just go back here and now select this custom deck and pin it so this stays here. I'm going to go to the sends loader, go to bus 9, drag that in there. And maybe I want to have tape delay. So what I'm going to do is go to the plugin loader which is over here, and then go to Tape Delay and bring that in over here. So now I'm going to assign this deck to appear 
on this machine. I could have it on my iPad, but let's go with this machine and it's gonna go show deck and there it is. So back in Logic Pro, here's my little deck and let's say I've got this vocal track over here. So I'm gonna go bust nine, boom, there it is. Now I'm gonna hold down option and tap on that. And there it's put tape delay in at the destination of bust nine. And just for good measure, let's run our alchemy channel strip again and see it in action as it's going through all those multiple steps that are assigned to this macro. There it is. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, if you're like me, I'm kind of a crusty old dog at this point. I'm one of these, you gotta pry the mouse out of my cold dead hands type of logic users. But I have to say, I didn't plan on liking this, but I do. I find it above all fun. It's like I said earlier, a new way of interacting with logic and it's just fun kind of coming at it from a fresh perspective. So I encourage you to go to the Soundflow website and you can download a free 30 day trial and you don't need anything other than just your Mac to try it with. So take a chance, I think you're gonna like it. This is Eli Kranzberg for Production Expert.